And now Petros is in some real, real danger here. I call him the devil that night. I mean, really the devil. Matias just marching him down, hands are low. Oh, wow, he's coming. Fight fans, welcome back. He's a tropical storm, like he's a nightmare. The 140 pound ecosystem is a mixing pot of hard hitters and slick movers. Fighters filled with confidence, brimming with attitude and bad intentions. I mean, he gonna make it bad for anybody, anybody. Because mentally, he don't think nobody can f with him. Drop a Puerto Rican piranha into this pool of talent, a gentle ripple is about to become a feeding frenzy. You keep working with it. Now he got scared, now he got scared. So now we gotta keep going. As he creeps ever closer to an elite level competition, here, we pitch Subrio Matias against the four horsemen of boxing's lower weight classes. He wants all the smoke, all the big names in the division, so people don't have the excuse anymore not to fight him. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. No, I'm not basically a hard hitter, but I'm, the way I fight is just string him down like a tree, just keep hitting him. But I just don't know how much more he can take. You're not a hard hitter, but you're 18 and one with 18 knockouts. Uh, you think you can improve on how hard you hit? For a premium puncher enshrouded in mystery, violence comes as second nature for a man who survived gang shootings. A mí me parece bien interesante porque entiendo que te dieron unos impactos de bala. Sí. ¿Qué es lo que pasó? Enjoyed brief domestic success as an amateur. Before transitioning into the hurt game full time. Okay. Nosotros estábamos viendo la pelea y estábamos preguntándonos, ¿estarán orgullosos sus compañeros de la cárcel? Como que, diablo, cabrón, ese tipo estaba aquí. Claiming he was a dead man, brought back to life to fulfill his promise, the Matias hype slowly built. Pasé un suceso tras otro, lo fortalecí de una manera mentalmente. Es realmente, ¿verdad? Mi meta no es. Eh, ser temido en mi división, sino pelear con, la, con lo mejor para demostrar ¿verdad? De que el orgullo de Maternillo es una realidad. Normally I can tell when a fight needs to be stopped. This is a kind of ring tragedy style fight. July 2019, Maxim Dadashev mumbled to his corner team how much Matias shots hurt. Matias carries that power. Again, just because he does not knock you down doesn't mean he's not hurting you. The last shot that sent Dadashev reeling at the end of the 11th, I thought, uh-oh, I don't like the way the Dashev stepped, like he didn't know where the canvas was. Increasingly concerned by the relentless punishment, trainer Buddy McGirt pleaded to anyone who would listen to stop the contest. Well, he didn't want me to stop it. I asked him like five times, I said, please, Max, I'm going to stop it. Oh. Max, you're getting hit too much. And he said no, but my mind just said, stop this damn fight. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the sad thing about boxing, it's a contact sport, and, you know, whenever you get bleeding in the brain, that's, you know, there's usually no positive outcome off that. This is just one of those perhaps unavoidable consequences from time to time of an extremely violent and dangerous sport that I love. God bless Max, Max Dadashim, but Max fought him. That was the kid Max fought when he, when he, when he died. Correct. That guy's a beast, man. Any feelings or any emotions that you're having right now? Everybody feels crazy. Everybody feels crazy. To it's very bad for sport. Yeah. Suddenly, Matias's name was out there, but under circumstances nobody wanted to see. It's unfortunate, it's sad, but that is the nature of the sport. But Matias has been able to get past that mentally. Some guys cannot. Matias has. Still carrying the ghosts of the Dadashev fight, Matias was narrowly beaten by Petros Ananian. Petros Ananian. I'm not looking for excuses. I'm a man who loves to fight. You know, I'm a hard case. I want to fight people. You know what I'm saying? 
me querían cancelar la pelea. Yo les dije que si ellos hacían eso, yo me retiraba del boxeo porque yo soy un hombre. Yo tengo dignidad. Coming event, a rematch. Petro Sananian, Subriel Matias. Here we go. As Matias starting to rip through back to the body. He's now the one being the aggressor. Back to the body and just an insane combination. And now Petros is in some real, real danger here. This was your only blemish that you had on your record. And you were able to come back and right that wrong and do it, as we said, in devastating fashion. There was a lot of risk in taking this fight. Why did you do it? Is that when you're sure what you know that you have, the skill that you have, then you take the fight. I mean, just look at the damage that's been done. Defeat sparked a remarkable run of five consecutive retirement wins. With 20 knockouts, every man he's fought, he stopped, and the one loss he did avenge. One, his last five fights, every guy has quit. He has never looked close to losing since. Now, I don't want to jinx Ponce, but I have not seen him being hurt in this fight yet, or I hope not, but I'm just saying he's got a great chin. Sabriel's building block physique, natural power, and explosive aggression have shaped him into a super lightweight boogeyman. Short, sharp shots generate thudding Baterbiev-style blows. You know, I know Matias only landed 15 jabs in this fight, but I'll tell you what, every 15 were hard. Opponents struggle to predict the incoming missiles while landing return fire on a rock-faced foe who takes their best shots in the opener. <laughs> Disrespecting Akin yes. by marching oh, forward yeah, with his hands down. Before unlocking his weapons to become a wrecking machine. I called him the devil that night. I mean, he really the devil. He really could, could turn shit over on you and make it just bad for you. If you don't have the shit to, to make him respect you and you don't have the shit to keep him off you. I thought his English was pretty good, yeah. but uh, he <laughs> sent a message for each and every title holder at 140 pounds. I'm here. So, you're watching the best 140 pound in the world, and the world no one. What I believe is one of the most exciting pound for pound fighters on the planet. A high risk, low reward monster always spells danger for the very best. Which rival will step up and face him? Because of the way Matias fights, because of the type of fighter he is, he's had problems with opponents wanting to face him. But I think now, with what we've done in this signing, this will make things easier along the way. What you can expect is uh, no, no more Mat Matias forever, you know, for, for, for the long run. Long time. Long time. <laughs> no mas Matias, got it, yeah, got no it. Styles make fights, and Matias has already received an offer from representatives of a man who once threatened to take over the entire lower weights. Tio Subio and Devin Haney. Which one is the hardest for you guys and the easiest, you think? I think Sabrina would probably be the hardest fight, and then Devin. And who else you said? Tio. Tio would definitely easy. be easy. Tio would be easy. After questioning his own abilities, Teofimo Lopez pulled off a career-boosting win by toppling unbeaten king Josh Taylor. He's able to be his best when he needs to be his best, when the lights are brightest, and it's been this way throughout his career. Hey, so oh man, just give me Teofimo Lopez for Sabriel Matisse. Please, please, if you're watching this, Teofimo Lopez, please fight Sabriel Matisse. Sending a contract to an injured Matias' team shows initial intent. The reason why he's made that office is because I've just recently fight, fought and I won't be ready and prepared for that fight. If he's a man and he's a man of his words, then he will take the fight with me. Teofimo Lopez, you're a coward. I'm here. You wanted this? I'm here. Oh, to me, Matias is just a one-dimensional fighter. You know, Matias is getting hurt. You know, everybody knows he's chinny. And, and the message for his dad, stop talking so much. You know, if he wants to fight me, he can fight me. Getting this unification over the line would perfectly create a New York clash. Tio versus Puerto Rico, all guns blazing, setting the garden alight. Do I think you're going to beat Matias? No. I think Matias is going to stop being uh, Tio Fimo. I don't even think he's going to go to We've seen him do it a lot, but we've, we've never seen it against a Tio. But we've never seen Tio in there with a big puncher like that. Five years older than Lopez, 
Matias's reach advantage would not be as much of a factor given his compact style. Tio is a known puncher, even when facing a man with a 100% KO ratio. Very interesting fight. Tio has the skill for sure to beat him, but do we have the will? Questioning Lopez's desire for a brawl, Matias likes opponents straight in front of him. Salivating over counter-punching opportunities, Teofimo's big fight experience would make him a favorite. Very easy to beat. So, so after this fight, I said, well... I like fighters like him. I know you do. Somebody's going to walk up on you, but that's your rhythm. That's Let's your see. style. This dude didn't yeah. have it. This, he'll probably go out in four. Oh, it is stacked, and now they have two title holders. Absolutely. 140 stacked. You know, Haney... Uh, even Javon said if he wants to move up to 40. He called out everyone with a belt, including Tank, at the end. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken to Subir Matias. He said that it would be an honor to fight Tank. 2023 started fast for Javante Davis, facing back-to-back -back Garcias. However, after dissecting Ryan's ribs, the momentum ground to a halt. Hey. Creo que él alardea de que él es fuerte, le gusta hacer daño a sus oponentes, pero no se enfrenta con alguien que tiene la misma mentalidad que él. Davis's only 140 flirtation came against Mario Barrios. Expectations are indeed high with Gervonta Tank Davis daring to be great against by far the biggest opponent he's faced. Matias brings more danger than benefit and his physical strength would pose major issues. Both carry huge power, although Gervonta is more refined and technically better than often credited. Okay, given uh, the performance of Devin, if we put all these guys in a lightweight tournament, who's in the final and who wins that final? Matias and uh, Gervonta Davis are in the finals. Oh, I forgot to mention Gervonta. Used to backing people up, Matias's slower feet could end up chasing shadows and walking into stinging combinations from the shorter southpaw. On the face. Oh, there's a big right hook that connected by Chukembayev. I don't know if Matias was off balance. I can see Tank cracking Subriel because oh, Subriel, Subriel yeah, they, gets hit a lot. Tank would need to create space and distance to find the obvious holes in Matias's defense and justify his tag as the man to beat. He's a beast. He's so excited. But you have to show the world more of him. Because then when he fights Teofimo, Haney, Tank, he's going to get what he deserves by being a star. Devin Haney. Take it. <laughs> As the former undisputed lightweight ruler and two division champion, Devin Haney would argue that the man to beat tag belongs to him. I think that it's a very real possibility to fight with Subriel, the one armed bandit, anytime. I called him up. I called him up after the fight, like I do. As soon as Devin handled his business, I called to see what's cracking, who's talking about what. You take a one one first, right? See what you can do at 40 first. But he come, he come and step to the, you know what I'm saying, the best. So, kind of surprised about it. Regis Progre was a classy champion whom Devin neutralized, dismantled, and made look like a battered contender. And I had the opportunity to fight on the same stage as Progre in one of his previous fights, and, and I realized then he, that he wasn't all that. And I wanted to be the fighter that would be able to kind of remove that mask um, in the way that Devin Haney did. Campaigning on his own terms, conceivably free to cross promotional divides, Devin may look at the likes of Sander Martin or Richardson Hitchens if he cannot nail down a super fight. How do you believe that you would fare against someone like Devin Haney? You know, I feel that the only thing he's got is that he moves well and he's able to run around the ring. But I think if I faced him, I would get out, 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 box him. Devin Haney had a huge reach advantage, a six inch reach advantage over Progre. But with Matias, the reach is actually equal. Matias questioned Haney's heart already goading the Californian into a scrap should they meet. Despite their matching height and reach dimensions, clever Devin would utilize his rangy jab, fast hands and feet, to stay clear of Matias's slashing hooks and bulldozer assaults. The intensity will die down the second half of the fight. No oh, big left hook! Haney's growing resume and past accomplishments make him the choice of many. 
Tio. Tio. Oh, a Devin. Devin now boxing. And Ryan, I think Ryan would do something with him. Way every fight like he was fighting uh, uh, the other night. Yeah, I think Ryan would beat him too. Uh, Ryan Garcia has been flat-footed in the past, but in his last fight, there's a little bit more movement, lateral movement, backing up, going forward. He's going to need all that. Headstrong and determined to defy his paymasters at any opportunity, accepting the opponent nobody wants to face would be an on-brand move for Ryan Garcia. I feel like it's a fun fight. He's a, you know, aggressive, crazy dude. The lead up will be crazy. You and Ryan Garcia, big fight? He's now 140. Really, really good fight. I like this fight. Best 140 is here. No Teofimo, no hate me, chicken. No Ryan, who is Ryan? He showed against the dangerous but predictable Duarte that his power and speed remain. Overcoming the Matias threat would gain massive kudos. It's a really impressive pace that he has. Not an easy fight for anyone at 140. I mean, I don't think he's... I, I, don't, I, I don't think he beats like the champs. Right. That's not gonna be fun to face him. While his head retains boulder-like qualities, Matias is open and unafraid of being tagged clean. So much, we talked about power shots. Slightly taller, Ryan's lightning left hand would put that to the test. That was right in front of us. I felt the thudding power, the force of that. So you guys don't make no headlines saying I'm ducking. If he wanted, it, let's get it. Requiring persistent movement, Garcia's new obscure shell defense would be a recipe for disaster against a man who chews up and spits out straight line static stylus. As he uploaded a vicious combination of Pondrick and Miami. Sabriel Matias tears up scripts and dishes out beatings. A trash-talking terrorizer approaching cult status, this boxing boogeyman will cause problems for anyone as he aims to prove the hype is real. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see a lot of this man from Puerto Rico, Sabriel Matias, ladies and gentlemen. Woo!